These are my earbuds, and you can ask my parents. I wear them all the time. I looked at my phone this morning, and this past week, I listened to 22 hours and 50 minutes of music, a whole day's worth of music. And if you go around today, you see a lot of people wearing earbuds and earphones all around. And really what it is, is it's a distraction for us. You know, you know, you got something going on at work, you got something, a new job, new interview, medical issues. We don't like to think about it, so we like to distract ourselves. And I think that in our spiritual walk, we get distracted often, whether we seek it out intentionally or just by happenstance. Sometimes I think even when we chase after God, we end up chasing distractions. But God doesn't really find us in these places, and we end up getting farther and farther away. When God really does is he finds us in silence, in the quiet. I have a great example of this. In 1 Kings 19, we see the prophet Elijah. We see him after a great victory over the prophets of Baal, of idol of that time, very popular. He called on God's name, on his power, and God rained fire from heaven to wipe out the prophets of Baal. It's amazing. He was a first-hand witness of God's power and the power he held by his relationship with him. But when the queen of that time, Queen Jezebel, you might have heard of her, heard about this, she said, I swear by all the gods, all the false idols, I will kill Elijah for what he's done. <laughs> scary, right? Oh, he thought it was scary. He got distracted. He heard this, and he ran away. After calling down fire from heaven, he ran away. And he ran to the foothills, and he went under a tree to lay down, and he said, God, I'm the last of your prophets. This is t- I'm tired. I'm hungry. People are trying to kill me. It's terrible. I would rather die than be here anymore. So he fell asleep, and immediately God sent an angel. The Bible says it sent the word of the Lord to him. And he said, Elijah, get up, eat and drink. The journey is long. He got up, he ate and drank. He went back to sleep. And again, the angel came, and he ate and drank, went back to sleep. It doesn't feel better after a nap and a hot meal, right? Well, after that, he walked 40 days into the wilderness until he came upon a mountain where the Holy Spirit came to him once more and said, go to the mountain, go to this cave, and the Lord will come to you. So he went there, and he went to the mouth of the cave, and he looked out, and God sent a great wind ahead of him. And it says that the wind was so strong and so loud that it shattered the rocks of the mountain. But God was not in the wind. He wasn't in that distraction. He wasn't in the noise. Next came an earthquake, and the earthquake shook the mountain that he was in, and rocks were falling, but the Lord was not in that earthquake. He wasn't in the distraction. Lastly came a great fire that swept across the mountain face and burned up everything around it. But the Lord was not in that distraction. See, only after all this came a gentle whisper. Silence. A quiet wind. And that's where God was in. And he came to him in that moment of silence, in that quiet. And he gave him comfort. He gave him instruction. And he gave him peace for the next moment forward. So we don't like silence. It's unpleasant. It's uncomfortable. It can be awkward. But often, God's just waiting for us in that quiet. He's waiting for our moment of peace to move forward. Psalm 46.10 says, Be still and know that I am God. A command from God, instructions, to take a moment, to be quiet, to just sit. For the next 20, 30 seconds, I'd like us just to sit in quiet, absolute silence, and try and listen to what God has to say to us. It's uncomfortable, right? It's awkward. We don't like sitting in silence. We like the distraction. We like the noise. But if you would take a moment this next week to just sit in silence and let God come to you, I'd appreciate it. Thank you.